So, Nate, hey man, uh, this is uh, debut episode one, right? Let's see where this goes from here. But, uh, dude, I've been impressed by your journey, right? You and I met each other, I believe, the first time that we ever saw each other in person was at a Tulsi Gabbard event. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny that she's back in, you know, we we kind of had this already planned to do and come together. And then I see her coming up with Joe Rogan. <clears throat> so it's really interesting that, you know, here we are finding ourselves back aligned. And yet, you know, what brought us together is also back in the limelight. So I I, I can't help but um, see the, you know, kind of the higher intelligence at play there. <laughs> Yeah, that is, uh, you know, very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting that you, I was actually just listening to that podcast uh, prior to um, joining this call. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's all fascinating, because, um, you know, coming out of the spiritual process, it, it was one of those Bernieites back in 2016 and stuff where you really, I don't know if you were, I believe you were at the time. Oh, yeah, um, oh, yeah I was a hardcore burner. The same here, man. I mean, um, I was all about that. And then the thing that I'm grateful most about that whole um, that whole saga there was it was really eye an eye opener. Hey, and, so so real quick, that that's really interesting because you you almost made it sound like the saga is over, like it's a saga that you kind of went through that you kind of triumphed over. Does that sound like the the right kind of sound that you gave that to? It was definitely a chapter in my life. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Anyways, sorry to cut you off, but I just, oh, no, 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 I just no, want to no. make sure I heard that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did hear that right. It was a chapter. Uh, I would say the book is not yet over yet, but uh, that yeah. was, it was a chapter. My whole ideology has shifted uh, since then. I wouldn't say uh, that I'm a right winger by any means. I wouldn't say that I'm really necessarily a left winger either anymore. I'm kind of more in that anarchist camp where. Um, You know, I think that it's really pointless to kind of discuss about what kind of change you're going to deliver because the institutions are so corrupted that the whole system needs to be uprooted. There's no election or anything like that. And this also goes for no matter, you know, for those uh, whose politics lie on the right or the left. I mean, so without getting too far down the rabbit hole there, I wonder, do you think that there's a connecting element there? Like what drew, what kind of drew you to the passion and kind of the beauty and the simplicity of what Bernie was saying to kind of the simplicity of just like, well, there, there is maybe a rebooting or something that's necessary. I'm curious, have you been able to figure out where that lives in the Nate Kivani, right, universe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. I guess kind of more in an existential way is, is that just started really that the world itself is just nothing but kind of like we're living in the matrix. There is a sociological matrix, which is much more of a society structure. Sure. And there's also, I would say more, if you want to say an existential matrix as well, something more spiritual as well. It's amazing how, you know, life kind of mimics that as well. And you have, you know, different forces at play and such. But I'd say really what woke me up through that whole, the Bernie campaign was, um, is I always thought that, you know, just organize and you can deliver about change that way. You can win people over with arguments. And then you see everything in real time. You're like, well, okay. Not only did they steal the election from, you know, Bernie at the time, at least per the WikiLeaks uh, email and all of that, but just the way they continually started harassing supporters, um, you know, unless you were completely on board with um, with Hillary at the time, you were a misogynist or you were. Oh, bro. Yeah. You may as well be trying to ram some sort of like giant Rambo and cock down some some poor little kid's throat. dude. It was disgusting the way that they just completely alienated people simply because like you might question. Yeah. Right, imperative. But, yeah. did you know, that because Trump smells like Russian pee. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, why, that's yeah. why he shouldn't be our president. He shouldn't be our president. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. Early on, I was really amongst the really hardcore anti-Trumpers. I mean, when he first got so elected, was I. I mean, so was I. I think we all kind of were kind of like shocked. I think he was shocked that he won. Dude, know? he was dude. He he was out of the limelight for like two or three weeks. Like he didn't oh, know what the hell to do. He didn't expect to win. Oh, shit, he was trying bad. to create. He was trying to create like this whole media infrastructure and just like, and but. 
what's so amazing though, and this is where I'd I'd love to get some of your view because you've got you've got uh, what seems to me, and maybe I've got a misread on this, but it seems to me like you've got a little bit more scholarly approach to a little bit more of the um, maybe Eastern ways of the philosophy, whereas I just kind of happen into it, dude, because I like to trip balls and because I just really am a huge philosophy fan. And so I just try and, you know, sad guru is a combining element between both of us. It sounds like, which is really interesting again, um, which is all about life is about the experience. Yeah. Right. And so I don't think that anarchy or Bernie is right or wrong. But it sounds like what we're talking about is a it's kind of a, a waking up process. Right? Bernie brought us to a place where we're like, hey, look at what's going on. We're like, oh my God, we can change things. Look how naive we are. But you know what? Just like a just like an infant, just like a little toddler growing up, I right? realize, oh, well, there, there's more rules to this game than we were were led to believe. Okay, so w- what do we do with that now? Do we just cry and suck our thumbs? Or do, no. do we figure out, yeah, and, and try to how to you know actually affect things for good? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know um, what? What really how it all kind of ties together then is is it's very easy. I think once somebody does wake up to the reality, whether it's in the physical world, like for me, for instance, with the whole thing with Bernie and all of that collapsing. I know this is universal. Uh, perhaps you felt it yourself. Is, is that it's very easy, therefore, to become very nihilistic. Oh, yeah. Cross that path because nothing else really matters anymore. And, right. And all so of that. Just burn it all down. Burn it all down. No, and no all pun intended that. there, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> that was the, actually the mantra, I think, of the actual yeah. campaign back in the burn day. Burn it all down. Yeah. Burn it down. And, um, you know, or feel the burn. But uh, after a while, I'm just like, you know what? there has to be another way to kind of like invest. And I remember hearing at the time I was really going through um, alcohol abuse at the time, you know, binge drinking on weekends was the first thing I was looking forward to. And I knew something was wrong. And I remember hearing actually another podcast with Joe Rogan, but the guest was Oliver Stone, a filmmaker who I have a lot of uh, respect for. And um he said one question that, that was proposed to him, he said that the reason he felt that a lot of reason why a lot of younger people were turned into substances and addictions. And of course, he was a former coke head himself, you know, he's mm-hmm. a Vietnam War vet. Um, and he said that uh, the reason for that is he feels that there's a big lack of spirituality. Oh, 100%, man. Well, but not just that. It's not just that there's a lack of spirituality, but you're actually lampooned especially as a westerner if you have any sense of i mean here i am with a fedora wearing a batman scarf man so like i'm just let my my absurdity just fly um you know i've got jocko willink i've got peter sage you know uh david hawkins and then i've also got ra salvatore right i mean some of of the deepest uh philosophy and just some really fun nerdy fantasy yeah i mean Uh, because that's part of the awakening process. I mean, even Einstein said that the mark of intelligence is uh, your imagination. And he was, Einstein was also somebody who said imagination is more important than an education. Yeah. Um, and it's true. Well, real quick before we go, do you know how he actually figured out the uh, um, his uh, e equals MC squared? I've never heard the story of how he came to that realization, no. He was so bored out of his mind. So we forget all this. We, for, we always say, well, didn't you know? Well, it's okay, it's okay, little Johnny, to be pumped yeah. full of pills. It's okay, little Janie, to be pumped full of pills. Didn't you know that Einstein was a terrible student? Well, what they forget to tell you is that the problem that with a phone and what a phone does now is it robs you of the exact thing that allowed Einstein to come up with what he came up with because he was so bored out of his mind. He was staring at a clock and just wondering, like, what the hell would happen if I could actually travel faster than the speed of light on this pencil? And he saw the clock going backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's how it all started, man. It just all clicked. Yeah. I wonder how much of that was actually him discovering it or better yet, what if he was remembering it? So to educate means to bring out from within. So, yes, he was remembering it. Um, but higher truth has to be discovered. 
because we have to realize that we've already been there. Because if we really are in the image of God, we just went really deep, bro. We just went real deep. We just kind of, we probably left some people, you know, they're following this. 